Welcome back to another Bad Aussie Gamers Hunt Royale Guide. This is an updated guide of my earlier Abyssal. So this is my damage reduction loadout, my main loadout for Abyssal. And damage reduction is your best friend. The blue gems do cost a lot, but it is well worth. This will get you through the majority of Abyssal. The next set is optional. It's a fire build. Some players use this on waves 2 and 4. It triples Reflect. There are some characters like Mummy that are absolutely busted with it. And just make sure you communicate with your teammate though, because if one's poison, one's fire, it won't work. So let's get into the run. So I'm starting here with Barbarian. I'm going to use Damage Reflect as a strategy, which is one of the strong strategies in Abyssal Maze. So I'll just go and grab a couple of mobs. I don't really need to do this with my gear. Once they're all level six, you can pretty much run straight to the boss straight up. Just make sure you grab a fair pool of mobs along the way because healing is very reduced in Abyssal Maze. So once you get a bit of reflect, the more mobs you've got hitting you, the more healing that you're actually doing to help stay alive. And this will really help get those first stacks up on the boss. So depending on the character, some later waves... You might want a few thousand stack if you're using something like Druid and haven't got much damage reflect on. However, for Barbarian, I can normally do this with 300 odd on the first is what I normally aim for. So I'm just going to get a bit of stack up here. So we're going to put a few little housekeeping things in. Why I said help there. If you see someone say help, it means come and assist with the stack. So as you can see, now while they're attacking it, if I try and do my reflect here, nothing's going to happen. And in fact, I'll start losing health to the point I'll eventually die. If you see them say thanks, it means that's an off stack and you stop. Now that the other players stopped attacking, you'll see I'll heal enough to stay alive, especially on these healing waves. And my reflect is now doing quite a lot. So the more you get hit in Abyssal, the boss puts weakness on you. And the weakness, obviously, as he hits more, reflex more onto him. Wave 2, I'm going to keep with the poison build to show you that you don't need the fire builds for 2 and 4. Yes, it can be quite helpful. So the strategy we're going for here, and I didn't have to type it in-game as I was sitting a metre across from the person I was playing with this time. He's got Necromancer, so he'll slow down the boss once he gets his improved summons times 2. And that'll allow me to be able to just come in and work on leveling up and then getting straight on damage while the boss is moving really slowly. So you've also got to consider what the other person's using. So because he's gone Necromancer here, he relies heavily on killing mobs to get his minions to be able to keep going. So if I went a character like Zeus with Death Strike that could kill two, three rooms at once, that's going to really disadvantage my teammate here being a Necromancer. It'll really uh, hinder his ability to assist. So at the very start, I'm just going to help us both get some levels. I'm just steering clear of him a bit. So what you can do if they're a Necromancer is I'll come up here and instead of killing everything, I'll just weaken it, give it a couple of hits so it's half health. Uh, makes it a lot easier then for his minions to come and finish him off and keep growing and spreading. Because of no healing wave, I am focusing a lot more on dodge whenever it appears. Just so that extra survivability makes life a lot easier when you're running backwards and forwards through mobs or if you've got a kite uh, of a boss around. There are some instances where you will have to run out of room and run back past him. So having that bit of dodge will help stay alive. So I'm just going to move down here, away from the Necromancer, and just kill a few of these. Now I'm level 17, I can do quite a bit of damage, and I'll start working on killing the boss. So as you can see, the Necromancer's come down and put the slow minions on it, which has pretty much brought the boss down to a crawling speed now. And this will make it real easy for me to just keep moving backwards and forwards slightly and keeping the attack on. So, in my opinion, Reflect is one of the quickest and most effective uh, methods to use in Abyssal Maze. It is just really quick, but there are other ways. Um, Phantom is another good one. If you have a, any slow character, Protector, Snowman, any of them, Frozen Queen even, 
it'll slow it down and the phantoms, mobs, once they get enough ghosts and ghost time that they'll stay there, the boss will actually turn around and run away from you, making it really easy to just stand there and kill on a no healing wave. Weakness is another really good strategy to use in here. Be mindful, however, that disease does not work on the Abyssal Maze boss. So Mad Doctor or Plague Rat will have no weakening effect on the boss at all, no matter the wave. They can help kill mobs early on. However, Wave 5 is a no weakness wave where the mobs will be immune to weakness and disease. That is just the mobs, however, for the weakness, the boss still is always immune to disease, but will be vulnerable to that weakness on wave 5, however, the mobs won't be. So just keep that in mind. So as a weakness character, I'm more trying to support what my teammate's doing here, so I'm going to take any uh, extra weakness that I get, any frequent vortex, and that will just help keep that weakness on. Being a healing wave, especially... I'll be able to just stand there and take the damage of the boss while my teammate comes in. The other uh, strategy is damage split. So with that weakness I was talking about earlier, it will keep stacking up on you. And so characters like Ancient One, for instance, can take a lot of hits, but if you don't have enough multi-shot, eventually the weakness will become so much that he will one-hit you. However, if two players stand on top of each other in front of a boss, that negates the weakness. Or even if the other player, if they're not as highly geared and can't do the damage split, if every four or five seconds they come in and just take one hit and move back, it will reset the weakness on a player that's tanking. Definitely don't do it if they're a reflect character, as that will just cause issues with the reflect. However, if it's something where you're just doing straight up damage, ninja, phantom, mech with a weakness and yeah, it's damage splitting or even if you have full damage reduction gear, you can just stand on the boss together as say a mech and a phantom together and with that damage split at level 20, you should be fine to stay alive and just kill the boss. So this is the example here of the fire build. So it's just six level six fire stones for maximum fire damage. Once you get over a 1,000% fire on your build, it means that you can go past that 10 stack of fire and do a lot more damage. So again, it's not necessary. A lot of speedrunners use it or people make it easier for these no healing waves. I did over 5,000 floors of Abyssal before I finished my fire build. And so right here, if my teammate comes in because they only have poison and hits it, it won't keep the fire stack and it will reset anyway. I'm not too concerned because Turtle is just absolutely broken in Abyssal. So with the triple reflect now, as you can see, I can just move and let that damage tick down. And it's that easy to kill the boss. So it is helpful, but again, it is very resource heavy. I'd worry about the damage reduction and poison first, as that's more of an all-rounder. Here we go, wave five. Ancient one is incredible for stacking, really convenient for that, and really high damage output as well. He's a character I'd consider an all-rounder. As we load in here to a final wave, So if you don't have full damage reduction, you are going to take quite a lot of hits and it will be very painful. Just try and keep moving. You don't want to spend too much time standing in one spot. You're just going to have to try and learn the patterns of like the Scythe Mages throwing straight out so you can dodge a plant range. And once you get the hang of it, you can actually start to dodge quite a lot of those attacks early on. With my gear, I just really don't bother. Uh, make sure you're just constantly moving though, especially wave five, as you can see, that time ticks away very quick. It doesn't give you a whole lot of time. And so again, on wave five, this is all monsters are immune to weakness and disease. And if you pay attention, it will tell you at the start of each round exactly what the monsters will be immune to that wave. 
And obviously again, two and four are the no healing waves in Abyssal. So a lot of multi shot, one death strike, what well, if a heap of multi shot makes Ancient One incredibly strong. And of course some more tentacles so they can stay there. If you get enough more tentacles, it is even possible that if the boss kills you, the tentacles can keep hitting him until you respawn. So here we are just damage splitting again, the two of us standing together so that neither of us is suffering from that weakness. And from here we can just sit here and it's an easy win. The boss won't do enough to hurt us, we're healing through it. GG. That simple.